Unique device identification and the developing rules around its implementation have a lot of acronyms. I'm Bruce Fegan, Q Pharma's VP of Project Management, and I'm joined today by Tom Beatty, the Senior Principal of UDI Compliance. And you know, Bruce, UDI, or Unique Device Identification, has so many acronyms, it's almost its own brand of alphabet soup. At Q Pharma, we wanted to decode some of these acronyms for you. After UDI, the next spoonful of alphabet soup we would like to demystify is AIDC, or Automatic Identification Data Capture. AIDC is the carrier or label that displays or transmits the UDI data to scanning or radio technology. Common AIDC formats in use today are linear or 1D barcodes, like this HIBCC and GS1 codes on the left, and 2D codes like QR and data matrix on the right. Don't worry, I'll demystify those acronyms in just a bit. Radio frequency identification, or RFID tags, are also expected to be an acceptable format for automatic data capture. But since the final rule is expected to call for labels that are human-readable, if you use RFID, there still will have to be a human-readable label in case scanning or RFID reading tools are unavailable. The first part of a UDI is the device identifier, known as the UDI-DI. This is the static or fixed part of the UDI. In this example, on the left, we show a device identifier, which in this case is a GS1 GTIN, or Global Trade Item Number. GS1 is one of the choices you have for a unique labeling format. The purpose of this component of the UDI is to enable the unambiguous identification of a medical device used in the U.S. and eventually globally. The second part of the UDI is the Production Identifier, or UDI-PI. This is the dynamic component of the UDI and changes with each production run or batch of the product. The UDI Production Identifier captures variable content like the use by date, lot, batch number, and serial number if required. The good news is that most of the production identifier information is already being captured as the elements have long been part of labeling requirements. A UDI is created by bringing together two parts, the device identifier in blue and the production identifier in green. It is important to remember that a UDI will require both of the above pieces. These can be concatenated into one long barcode or be split over two smaller barcodes. As for the expected UDI date format, in the draft rule released in 2012, the FDA proposed a format in the customary U.S. style of month, day, and year. But the agency re received a large number of industry comments that asked for alignment with ISO 8601, the year-month-day format that is in wide use globally. In recent public comments, the FDA appears to be leaning toward alignment with ISO 8601 as a way to address the concerns of companies selling product globally. So Tom, from where do the UDI requirements come? The FDA. The law requiring UDI was signed in 2007. The agency released the draft rule in 2012 and has collected extensive comments from industry, and they are expected to release their final rule shortly. Tom, what standards are available for UDI labeling? Well, Bruce, there are three main labeling standards that can be used for the device identifier component of UDIs. In no particular order they are, HIBCC UPNs or universal part numbers, which have been historically used in medical device supply chains, GS1 GTINs or global trade item numbers, which have been widely used in pharmaceutical supply chains but have been expanding into medical devices, and ISBT 128 codes, which are commonly used in the blood and blood product sector as well as in organ transplant labeling. 
These traditional alignments are evolving rapidly, and each standard has positives and negatives that you need to carefully consider for your organization. And again, there's no particular order for these, and we'll explain what each of these acronym sets mean. HIBIC stands for Health Industry for Business Communication Council. The Council assigns HIBIC UPNs, which stands for Health Industry Barcode Universal Product Number. This is an alphanumeric label that is variable in length, up to 18 characters. So Bruce, the HIBC and the HIBCC, are they two different acronyms? Yes, they're two different acronyms. The HIBIC with the two C's is the council that provides the barcode, which is the HIBIC with the one C. GS1, or Global Standard 1, was formerly known as the Uniform Code Council, or UCC, and they developed the Universal Product Code, or UPC, that was first used in retail over 35 years ago. GS1's GTIN, or Global Trade Item Number, is a fixed-length numeric code that can have up to 14 digits. The third major UDI standard is ISBT-128. ISBT stands for International Standard for Blood and Transplant, and the 128 is the number of characters it can contain. This standard is widely used by services and products related to blood, blood products, and organ transplants. That was a brief overview of the three main standard labeling choices you have for UDI. There are positives and negatives about each standard, which you have to consider when choosing one for your organization. Q Farmer, we can help you think through those choices. So, Tom, where does the UDI go when it's submitted? Yeah, as you might have guessed, the destination for all UDI data is another acronym. It is the GUDID, or Good ID, the Global UDI Database. This will be the publicly searchable master database of all medical devices approved for sale in the United States. Manufacturers will be required to submit data elements for their product to populate the good ID. This graphic shows 13 minimum data elements per device the FDA is expected to require for submission. The FDA is preparing a guidance document the UDI Database Implementation Guide, which provides direction for companies in preparing their products' data for submission, and it addresses metadata, required data elements, and it defines the elements that will be part of the online web-based portal. There are two additional acronyms I'd like to find here as well. The first is Pre-Market Approval, or PMA. This is the number that the FDA will assign to a Class three medical device after they've approved it for sale and the GMDN, which is the Global Medical Device Nomenclature Code. It's a global code that's used to define specific types of medical devices. If you are wondering how to bring together all of these data elements, we can help. Q Pharma's long and successful experience in implementing similar tracking tools to help pharmaceutical companies comply with the requirements around national drug codes has given us an understanding of how to best use master data as a thread to tie together all critical pieces of information for UDI submissions. Feel free to contact us so that we may better understand your needs and give you some of our insight. Oh, and one last set of acronyms. While the coming FDA UDI rule is foremost in the minds of many, there are international developments as well. The GHTF, or Global Harmonization Task Force, the group that brought together many different concepts for what UDI rules could accomplish globally, has been transformed, as of November 2012, into the IMDRF, or International Medical Device Regulators Forum. Going forward, the IMDRF will be the global body that manages the dialogue and collaboration between international regulatory bodies that craft UDI rules. Hopefully, we have cleared up some of the confusion of UDI acronyms. Please reach out to us if you have any questions or need to get your UDI compliance program underway.